You are now listening to The Beat Basement, Season 3, Episode 7. Uh, a lot of R&B, a lot of soul. Um, uh, as a 90s kid, I was a huge rock. Uh, you know, high school, I was all about like Green Day and Incubus when they first That's came when out. When rock music was rock that. music, yeah. Presents The Beat Basement, where you hear from your livest producers, all of them. And this is where it all goes down, where you hear the funky sound from the producers that's up and coming, the Grammy Award winning, all of them. I'm your host, Swish, and we're going in. Everything going in. On this episode, we had a super talented man, special, special dude, um, my boy Deke Beats. What's up, man? What up, dude? How you doing, sir? <laughs> Shoot, chilling, chilling, chilling. Nice to have you on the show, man. And thank you for coming down here, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. No problem, man. No problem. Where Where are we, man? We in a... we, we're in the country. <laughs> we're in the country. I told you. Uh, we're right in between uh, Orlando and Tampa, like literally 45 minutes each way yeah. in between in the country in Polk City. Polk. Mm-hmm. They got Polk. alligators and shit. They got gators. There, right? We got a, we got a family of them. So. <laughs> oh my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah, don't be creeping around here, <laughs> boy. Man, so tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, I'm gonna say my name is Deke Beats. Uh, I'm a lo-fi boom bap hip hop producer. Um, 36 years old, so I'm an old head oh, yeah, or OG or whatever you yeah. want to call it. Triple but, OG. Uh, uh, I used to DJ for about 15 years, off and on. You know, uh, just got sick of you know, actually just DJing. I got burnt myself out on DJing, you know, I always dabbled around with making my own music and stuff like that. But, you know, when it got to the point where I wasn't enjoying the gigs, I wasn't enjoying work, I wasn't enjoying the clubs and the clientele and dealing with bar managers and stuff like that, it was time for me to go ahead and step out of DJing. But then it was like, well, what am I going to do? You know, but started going in and just making beats and DJing my own music sort of in, in, in a way you know yeah 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 so I mean I definitely understand you about getting burnt out on on just the other aspects of, of what you did um that's I, I definitely relate to you because I'm a barber by trade and um I'm like this is my 15th year and I'm burnt out on it you know what I mean right. I'm burnt out and um you know I love podcasts and so and I love music, so that's yeah, what that's right. what you know kept me with producing and beat making and stuff, and learning how to, you know, what type of music that I want to make was more importantly like the hardest part of it, you know, because I knew I just didn't want to play everybody else's music, you know, I didn't want to go ahead and I had my SoundCloud with my DJ mixes that were like 45 minutes long, and you know, you have this other artist and this remix and this remix, you and gotta this play remix. them, and I'm like, you know, I want to play my shit, I want to play something play. different, you know, yeah. you know, I, I listen, you know, I grew up. On Tribe Called Quest and Daylight Soul and yeah. early '90s, you know, I was yeah. in middle school and you know riding yeah. my bike to the to the comic book store and you know the Waxy Maxies yes. picking up a vinyl yes. and and CDs like I, that's my era. So I mean, I, not that I you know outgrew what was going on at the times, but I knew that just that wasn't my place. You know, what I'm saying I'm like the old guy spinning like you know fist pumping breakbeat music you know the drake meeks and, you know the club mixes and migos and drake and stuff like that which is cool you know there's a time and place for it but me being me i didn't want that to be 130 in the bar with my equipment you know living that hustling lifestyle the money was good you know i lived off of djing a long time you know i still dj weddings and small events like that but i mean you won't catch me djing in the club you know like i've turned down money you know to dj in the club and that's just that's just not me that's that's the old me so the deep beats is the new me <laughs> <laughs> the new the new new the yeah. new you that's what it's about man how'd you how'd you come up with the name um deep deep beats i mean my nickname is deep my real name is Derek. Okay. so everybody just been calling me deep and yeah. i make beats so I, it's been in like the, <laughs> it's like the, it's like and the it easy, rhyme too, yeah. so, so i mean it's, it's like mad the, hip-hop it's the easiest way to <laughs> identify myself yes yeah, it's deep right. beats you know i mean <laughs> right. you know they got swiss beats out there they got a whole right. bunch of different beats i ain't want to be little nothing i ain't little d i'm 36 years old so <laughs> and i'm little over here so i'm deep beats <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
I got an uncle named Deke, man. See, yeah. Yeah. Love him to death, man. Golly. How long um, have you been making beats or and transition from the DJing? Uh, that's been, I'll say, my last time DJing actually at a club was at a spot in Jack's Beach last summer when we uh, still lived in Jacksonville. We've been down here since about Christmas, so um, actually working in a bar. I was working two bars at the time, a Friday night gig, a Saturday night gig, while uh, taking myself through, I guess you could say, like a producer boot camp. You know, using software, learning my VSTs, learning my way through my own software, just kind of making my own little, you know, 16 bar loops and just jamming out in the living room, you know, before deciding to go ahead and release a beat tape, you know. So about grinding really hard on that about two years. But as far as actually releasing my first produced beat tape, you know, I did that last October. So, yeah. So you've been making beats before the DJing? Or? Yeah, I mean, I I, I would go just ahead and collab took it with seriously. Him. Just never took it seriously. Exactly. I mean, I never took it seriously. Right. Like that comes down to the whole point. Like never once actually taking it seriously. Like me getting fed up uh, with the DJing and being like, "What's next? What's next?" And actually having my girl, you know, turn to me. She was just like, shout "Take out. this." <laughs> yeah, for real. Shout out. Shout out to Catherine over there painting shoes with the Angelos paint. Shout out. Um, but yeah. Uh, she actually sat me down. She was just like, you make really good beats. People need to hear uh, hear your music. So as actually sitting down and coming up with a five-year plan, like, and letting, you know, sitting down, uh, writing goals down. Um, shout outs to some other YouTubers who actually, like, you know, you know, watching good YouTubers and getting good advice from right people who are actually working it and figuring out, hey, what do I want to do? How do I get there? And this is my plan to get there. And now I'm doing my first podcast with you. So, I mean, something's, something's working out, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Yes, definitely is, man. Your sound is ageless, too, man. Um, what? How did you come up with your sound? Like, was it was it something that, that, that you grew up with? Or, or how did you make it what it is now? Um, I got to say, I'm definitely influenced by the music that I grew up with. I grew up... Uh, around a whole lot of whole lot of music exposure being from the dc area i mean right. there's go-go music for one yeah you know yeah you know, shout outs to the don't <laughs> shout outs to the that's, don't mute dc 80, go -Go movie. It? <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean and it's still yeah. crank, you know there's a lot of bands that still crank now you right. know and uh you know go-go music molded me a lot as a youth because you know that was on our local radio you know there was bands like you know rare essence and eu and 9-11 band and northeast groovers and and you know I, my gravy she loves when i listen to jam out the go-go music all the time because it just brings me home but it's something about that fusion of r&b rhythm jazz melodies heavy percussion uh, a lot of r&b a lot of soul um uh, as a 90s kid, I was a huge rock. Uh, you know, high school, I was all about like Green Day and Incubus when they first That's came when, out. When rock music was, was rock music, music. Yeah. yeah. And I, I still have a hard, I still have a dead, real deep love. The DJ in me right. really loves like all types of music, you know. But I have to say, like, you know, just the 90s yeah. and the 80s yeah. definitely yeah. molded me. Yeah. yeah. And being like my mom, she was a single mom, so we'd be riding, you know. Right. On, on the highway as a youth and she's putting up some song and that moment that you know every kid has you know that moment in the car and they, they, the mom the parents turn that song up and that's that song that hits them and I, I didn't get it but I get it now yeah. you know what I'm saying like an old Levert song will come on and be like oh I get it yeah. I get it I, I get it, hear it too yeah, much yeah. Then, but now yeah yeah so it's like producing actually helped me find more of my sound loving music and actually just taking time away from DJing to find out what other music I actually did like listening to, yeah. to get to my sound. Cause you know, when I was making beats, you know, excuse me, <clears throat> when I was making beats at the beginning, you know, uh, it was like, what type of music am I going to make? Am I going to make trap music? Am I going to make, you know, I started making beats, you know, uh, how, like how they sound out on radio. Right. Cause I just wanted to make beats and right. I wanted people to listen to my beats, you know, listen to my stuff where, you know, even in that early transition a couple of years ago, I'm still making music to please everybody else. The biggest lesson was I had to make music that made me happy. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, bottom line. Yeah, really just like mentally balling up that piece of paper, you know, 
screw the rules, right. screw the screw screw algorithms, yeah. screw the whole what keynote structure. Else is yeah, liking or saying. Yeah, and just kind of coming into my own. And as I progress to making beats, even from the beat tapes that I have now, from October to my next beat tape that I got coming up now, you can like literally hear the change in my sound coming to now and it's exciting to me because yeah. there will be beats that you know i cook up beats every day you know that's my job right now that's all i have to do is just go ahead and make music what i'm gonna do with them that's the other fun part because i listen to a beat and i'm like i didn't even know i made this beat i didn't even know i made this beat. but <laughs> once i got into my sound and figured out this is the sound that i was going to get into you know people call it lo-fi i mean the the tag the term to use for it now is lo-fi but you know i'll even it say like recycled no, 90s yeah. it's it like has a, no 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 it has genre. no sound it has no sound yeah i i, I like to say I like I, it's just another version of hip-hop like yeah. i just make my version of hip-hop how it sounds to me what right now hip-hop truly sounds like too, yeah you know what i mean appreciate that yeah how, how was it growing up in D.C.? How How is D.C.? I heard D.C. is nice. I haven't been there yet. You got to go. Everybody needs to go to the nation's capital once. Uh, D.C. is unlike any other city. Like, I love New York because I've been to New York, too. Okay. I haven't been to the West Coast, and I'm down That's here in I'm the from. South. See, yeah, so yeah. you're from West Coast? Yeah. All right, so uh, think of D.C. from what I've been told from West Coasters, that it's just like L.A. without a beach. Okay. Like, you got a lot of, you got a lot of culture there. Yeah. You got... Um, a lot of different type of music, a lot of different type of food, a lot of different type of people. It's just like a perfect, it's like a perfect mixing bowl at its best, you know. Um, and you know, people are serious about their their music in D.C. It's a fast place city, you know. Everybody either works government, military, something, but people are people are stern, people are quick, and people like their music over there. So yeah. How was, how was your childhood growing up in? Uh... Uh, my childhood was pretty straight, you know. It was a uh, middle class, you know. Dad wasn't around. So my mom and my grandparents raised me, you know. Uh, stayed out of trouble. I was that nerdy little kid. Um, did it help? Do you, do you think it helped involve your beats now? I, I absolutely, absolutely. I, I have a lot of conversations about my childhood with my girlfriend, or just talking about certain moments. I'll hear certain songs on the radio. It'll take me back to my childhood and, you know, I'll flip a sample of something or, or definitely my childhood. You know, I hear one type of style of music from my mom. I think one of the funniest things was uh, I remember uh, The Chronic when it came out, Dre's Chronic. Cause my mom was a young mom and she's bumping that track. So, <laughs> so I don't forgot what it was, it was Dre Day and then Snoop's line was like, I got a pocket full of uh, rubbers that my homeboys do too. But I'm a young dude at the time. I didn't know what it meant, so I'm singing. It's a po I got a pocket full of brothers and my homeboys do too, because I'm the young dude, but I'm still banging out the hip hop with my mom. But then when I finally got the line right, that one day, you know, she gave me that little quick pop across the head and everything like that. So I went. She listened to rap. She listened to soul. My grandmother. She listened to a lot of gospel. Went to church. You know, sang in the choir as a youth. Um, wanted to play piano. Nobody really had a piano, and everything. You know. Uh, Middle school, picked up my first instrument, was trumpet, then played trumpet, played the drums, played the flute, played clarinet, played everything, and you know, got into DJing when I was in high school and stuff like that. Which so, one is your favorite one? Uh, if I had, as far as instrument ever, like really picked up, man, I probably say like the bass guitar, mm. bass guitar, or and do you incorporate that? Do you incorporate the bass guitar in you? I incorporate a lot of like, as far as authentic sounds that I could find yeah. of the instruments that I love. Absolutely. Yeah. Got a lot of heavy bass, a lot of good keys, a lot of flute, yeah. a lot of uh, high pitch melodies and stuff. Like I would love to learn how to play the flute. Shout out Lizzo, yeah. the flute, you know, yeah. uh, just, yeah. I, I, I just, I love obscure. I wouldn't even call it <clears throat> an obscure instrument. Like my girl's dad, he plays, uh, was the French horn. He played the French horn and I like baritone, excuse me. He played the baritone. So it's just like, other instruments i mean there's so many instruments out there it's the cook up time for the cook up okay
Spotify sped up. I can change my life. No one can do it for me. Carol Burnett. Yeah, man, it's on you to go hard. Don't count on nobody else. It's only you can change your life. Only I can change my life. So do you. Do what's best for you. Don't look for no handouts or no help. God going to send it anyway. That's my word, y'all. Blessings on blessings on blessings. Peace.